some may not openly say so. Uh, and in fact, it suits them, if I may say so. In my opinion, the so-called Haqqani network, frankly, what this uh, so-called ISIS-K is the creation of a particular network, this Haqqani, you know, I'm, I'm not giving any name, but the ISIS-K is itself a creation of a network that must have felt unhappy that it was not getting enough recognition, if I may say so, within the government or not enough respect, not getting the primacy. So they wanted to demonstrate their mischief-making capability. ISIS-K, frankly, is only a label. I mean, these are obviously elements in the Taliban that wanted to convey the message that either you take us seriously or you're going to, you're going to see hell. And I think that message was conveyed, and I'm sure, you know, uh, I mean, uh, lessons were drawn, and quite possibly they have been accommodated in ways which may not be entirely pleasant for the Americans or Indians or Europeans in the long run. But that is ISIS-K. It, is, it exists as a label. That's all. Right. And I've seen in, in, the, you know, in Syria, for example, you have a so-called freedom fighter. He becomes an ISIS member uh, next, in, in next month after getting a lot of weapons and training from the Americans and the Gulf countries as a freedom fighter. And the freedom fighter becomes a fighter for the ISIS. And then when he finds that you know, he needs weapons and other things again, he needs a bit of rest also. And then he goes back to being a freedom fighter and then being lavished attention. And meanwhile, he sends his family to Turkey or to some other place where they are quite safe. So it's also very profitable to be a quote-unquote freedom fighter. Mm -hmm.